before you got your face tattooed, you had to have your neck tattooed. And before you got your neck tattooed, you had to have your hands tattooed. And before you got your hands tattooed, you had to have your whole freaking arm tattooed and more than likely a good portion of your body. The reason being is because people needed to know that you were going to be dedicated to the idea of having tattoos in public, in your face, you know, right out there where you cannot hide them. And it worked well for a long time. In my opinion, the body piercing equivalent of that is the microdermal surface anchor, dermal, whatever you want to call it, the single point piercing. We see even more so, more and more nowadays, of uh, people with very little piercings and very little modification work coming in and wanting to get surface anchors because they're cute or whatever. And don't get me wrong, they are kind of cool. My issue is more the idea that we're doing something on people that, you know, clearly has to be taken out by a professional. It's not something that's in the realm of do it yourself, just unscrew it and it comes out. You have to be able to go to a competent professional to get them removed. And there's different methods on removal, some of which work better than others. I'm going to show you how anchors are supposed to get taken out. This is done by a real piercer, not a tattoo person. You notice there's nothing in front of my name. No, no tattoo Pierre. No, Pierre, the piercer. <laughs> The truth of the matter is, is they have to be taken out by a competent professional. Surface piercings have been along, around for a long time, and uh, of course they didn't start off with surface bars. You were using straight barbells at first, then you were using curved barbells, and then the surface bars came around. If you don't know what a surface bar is, it's pretty much a piece of jewelry. Barbell looks like a little staple. The rises on it aren't quite as high as a staple would be on most cases at least uh, but uh, they've kind of gone a step further with these in the last few years and now we have flat bottom surface bars and actually another company has with the top side is flat as well this helps out really really good with areas where there's not a whole lot of skin to work with and a lot of times where there's curvature to the area as well because with the flat bottom bars you can actually bend it a little bit to fit the area of body that is going in which helps out a whole lot when you're doing surface work. I'm Devin and I'm getting the hip dermal piercings, two of them. And I came to Pangea because that's where I got my nose piercing. And all the other piercings, somehow they've been messed up. And this is the only place that has actually been decent and actually really good and I would recommend it to anybody. So.
enjoyable, but it actually really wasn't painful at all. I would recommend this to anybody. Um, and the piercer made it actually really enjoyable. So, um, yeah. So let's say you've made the decision to go ahead and get a surface piercing or a surface anchor. The main thing is, make sure your piercer doesn't just grab a hunk of skin and just shove a needle through there or anything like that. There's more careful techniques to use. Your jewelry should be smooth and mirror polished, no rough spots. Surface bars should look like an upside down staple with a little flat spot in the middle. And for God's sakes, get the internally threaded ones. You should see some of the crap that we've had to take out of people. The heads on your anchors ought to be nice and flat. They shouldn't have a bunch of stuff sticking up on them. You got a few different styles. The, uh, you have a few different styles. We have our own little bling discs made out of fine gold with precious gemstones. Of course, you know, industrial strength and a knot of metal have good fine choices for you to put on there. Next week, we see what Pierre did in San Diego, whether or not he kept his beard.